Welcome to Libraries Today. This program is intended to recognize and highlight the unexpected ways local libraries serve their communities today. I'm your host, Stan Howe. One of the Library Commission's signature events is the Letters About Literature Writing Contest. Letters About Literature is a national reading and writing program which asks students to read a book, poem, or play and then write a letter to the author, describing how the author's work affected their life. The program is sponsored by the West Virginia Center for the Book at the Library Commission. 2017 was the 24th year for the program, and over 700 students in West Virginia and nearly 40,000 nationally took part. It works like this. Students are divided into three age categories, level one, grades four through six, level two, grades seven and eight, and level three, grades nine through 12. Entries are first sent to the Library of Congress in Washington to be read by national judges. Those national judges then send the best of the state's letters to local West Virginia judges who then determine the winners. Winners are broken into top honors, honors, honorable mention, and notable mention, with top honor recipients advancing to national level judging. 2017's top honor winners for West Virginia are Kirsten Lauerman of Hurricane Middle School for Level 1, Annabelle Blosser of the Lindsley School in Wheeling for Level 2, and Sydney Nafla of Washington High School in Charlestown for Level 3. In today's program, we're going to hear from a few of the students themselves as they read their award-winning letters. First up, Natalie Elgin is a sixth grader from Hurricane Middle School. Her book, In Real Life, My Journey to a Pixelated World, by Joey Graceffa. Dear Joey Graceffa, In Real Life, What Does It Mean? I have always wondered, but I believe I understand now. Your book, In Real Life, gave me hope, confidence, and a greater understanding of the world around me and the things that happened around me each day. I knew the moment I picked up your book that my life and my world would be changed forever. Emotions, sadness, confusion, vulnerability, depression a deep, dark hole nobody ever wants to fall into. I know this because I fell in myself. As you can guess, while reading your book, I, and before I first laid eyes on it, I had a disease called depression. I had horrible feelings and felt like nobody cared or understood because the truth is I didn't really understand myself. Even though I had depression, it was pretty easy to keep in. And as long as I could read your book and find a way out of reality for at least a minute or two, I was fine. The truth to the matter is, although I was fine, I was sad and at one point started having suicidal thoughts. I don't know what would have happened if I didn't find your book, and even though I don't really want to know what might have happened, there are so many questions I could ask, like, what would I be like, would I still be depressed, or would I still even be here? The first time I started to read your book, I knew that something was different, though I didn't know you would forever change my life. I knew that the book, the words, the feelings you gave me were changing me. Every time I started to read your story, I could feel all my sadness vanish. Piece by piece, you were changing it to happiness, joy, hope, a life worth living for something to hold on to. I just wanted to get away from reality and maybe never come back. Whenever I would read your book, I felt as if you were tuning in on the sadness and kind of listening to my thoughts and feelings, trying to comfort me as if I was there with you. You listened and understood what I was going through, and the first time in forever, I finally felt like someone cared. During depression, I know I had many thoughts and feelings, and I just wanted to keep them in. Although your book was a way out of reality, I still always had to go back each time, each time changing to getting less stressful to me actually being happy. I was bullied a lot as well, and I just wanted to crawl down a hole and never come out. I am glad I didn't give up. If I only knew then that now I look in the mirror every morning and smile, and not a fake smile that I learned to do a while back. A real smile that was hard to accomplish with your book by my side. I knew somewhere deep inside of me that one day I would finally be set free. To say thank you would be an understatement. One day I hope and dream of meeting you in real life, so I can really, truly express to you how you changed my whole world in a way I will never forget. Not even the greatest writers could write down my love for your book and my thankfulness that it was there for me in the roughest time and lowest point in my life. I want you to know that because of your book, I am happy, lively, joyful, cheerful, ecstatic, merry, gleeful, or, or whatever you want to call it. But now, thanks to you, I am living a life worth living for. So all I can say is thank you for now. Sincerely yours, Natalie Elgin. Summer Lively is another sixth grader from Hurricane Middle School, and she read The BFG by Roald Dahl. Dear Roald Dahl, I have always loved your books. I have always loved all books. However, your book, The BFG, has made an impact on my life bigger than any other book was capable of doing. What's strange about my situation is that I don't very much relate to Sophie. 
I myself am not an orphan. I have two parents that are alive and well. I do relate to the friendly, big friendly giant himself, though. It sounds like a strange situation at first. You see, I'm relatable to the BFG because we are both the black sheep of our families. We also relate in the fact that we dislike snotcumbers. Please excuse my horrible book reference. I felt a personal connection to the BFG ever, every one of the three or four times I read the book. Although I feel this connection, I must criticize the fact that his jumbo elephant ears can't have two uses. They could work like hang gliders on the side of his head and cause him to glide over land and sea. I dreamed about that one. The BFG was using his ears to glide high above me. I was at first intrigued by your book ti by the title because I wanted to know what it stood for, the BFG. When I read it, I could hardly put it down. With every witty comment, I found myself smiling so much, I thought my face would split in half. As I read each twist, I found myself gasping with shock. I also made a notebook of predictions. I was almost sad as I read the last chapter. I got even more unhappy as I reached the last page knowing that after this there would be no more going to dream world and imagining what was going to happen next in the story, or that I was Sophie in giant country after she was swiped from her bed in England. I'm so glad my mom bought me the book, The BFG. If she didn't, I would still be wishing that I was more like my family. Your book showed me that I wasn't different from my family, I just didn't spend enough time with them. Now that I spend more time with my family, I see how much they are like me. Thanks to you, I have more and with my family. Overall, I think that I've learned being a little different is a blessing, not a curse for being the BFT. Thank you for writing it. Isabel Roop is an eighth grader from Beckley, and her letter was recognized with level two honors. Isabel read The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. Dear Miss Jeanette Walls, through reading your book, The Glass Castle, my eyes have been opened to a new perspective of life. Life is a journey. Each journey leads down a different road. Each road contro controls our destinies. Other times we become the passenger. We have no access to the wheel and therefore lose control of our fate. I see you living the years of your life trying to take control of the wheel. You experience hardships that could have scarred your heart. You lived life trying to grasp the idea of love from two parents failing to meet the basic needs of their children. I appreciate this book because of your tenacity. You finally persevered and took hold of the wheel. I love to see someone rise from ashes to glory. We all experience scars from the past, some deeper than others. After reading your book, I can better understand the background of some of the students that attend our school. Many, many students have similar stories like the glass castle. They struggle in areas like you did. One friend is being raised by his older sister because his father is deceased and mother is a drug addict. Some of my friends have had to relocate due to the decrease in coal industry here in southern West Virginia. Just recently, tragedy struck our school. Our friend lost one of his brothers in an automobile accident. While others, the other one still hangs on by life support, growing up in southern West Virginia has opened my eyes to the real and cruel world. However, you embrace your scars as a passenger on the road of life. As children, our hope rests in responsible parents who supply our basic needs. You knew hunger. You knew what it was like to be homeless. You felt the literal pain of physical burns. You knew shame. Your parents' love couldn't measure up in spite of their attempts at loving. The ideal of a normal family was a vanishing desire. The wounds of heartbreak, disappointment, and rejection ran deep. Yet, I was inspired by your drive to press on. I was challenged by your ability to look beyond the present and what was considered to be normal. 
We are all products of the past. We can become prisoners to that past also. However, I appreciate your ability to overcome the circumstances. You could have grown bitter, but instead you grew better. You were able to detach yourself from the situation and views matters from an outside perspective. In doing so, you were able to analyze and examine the current condition. You were wise beyond your years. Moving to New York allowed you to take hold of the wheel. You were able to supply your basic needs and those of others. You could now control your destiny. I applaud your drive and fortitude. Our hopes and dreams can be shattered. The promise of living in a glass castle can become an afterthought. Through your story, I have been challenged to value my roots. I have a deeper appreciation for my family, the stability and security of my home, and the values they instill in my life. I cannot forget where I come from, which is the same place you were raised in southern West Virginia. Although my circumstances are different, I now recognize that I am blessed to have two college-educated parents. Yet I understand that my ticket to the future is not punched. I cannot hang on to their coattails all my life. You knew that your ticket to the future was based upon your desire to persevere and start down a new road. You managed to break the cycle of poverty and neglect. As I reflect, I am reminded that we must not forget the struggles and the hardships of our life today. I work very hard at school. I push myself to a high standard. I am dedicated to the task at hand, yet I still struggle. Oftentimes, my hopes and dreams are crushed. However, I now understand that this is what makes me who I am. Without challenges, we should not grow and mature. We would not gain wisdom for the next challenges that come our way. Not only can I grow, but I can help others grow and mature through their struggles. They may be different from mine, but I can listen attentively. I can show them compassion and encourage them for the future. I want to some be someone who helps to pick up the broken pieces because this path is the one that will be remembered as it is composed of the networks of our being. Thank you for opening my eyes to the new perspectives of life. With sincere fondness and appreciation, Isabel Root. We'll hear some more letters about literature when we come back. Every child is curious. George, look what I found. Turn their curiosity into a lifelong love of learning. Create a curious reader. This is super bedtime reading. Share a book together today. Visit read.gov. One hundred seventeen West Virginia students were honored in this year's Letters About Literature ceremonies held at the Culture Center on the grounds of the state capitol. Cabinet Secretary of Education and the Arts, Gail Manchin, spoke to the honorees, as did keynote speaker and local author Belinda Anderson. Afterwards, some of the winners read their letters to us. Cecilia Fada is a Level 2 Notable Mention honoree from Parkersburg. Her book... Dragon Slippers by Jessica Day George. Dear Jessica Day George, I was captivated with your novel Dragon Slippers from the first page, and I greedily devoured it. Although fiction, Dragon Slippers allowed me to understand the true meaning of hard work, perseverance, and unconditional love. It seems that you share my love for the make believe, but you made this fantastical tale seem realistic to me. Your attention to detail painted rich scenes in my mind. A farm girl from a small town, Creeley Sol Carlbrun seemed like any other ordinary girl to me. However, she proved that effort, persistence, and loyalty have more effect than we realize. Creel was depicted so clearly to me. She was stubborn, brave, and eager to live out her dream. Determined to become a fancy worker, she never gave up no matter what happened. She traveled many miles, overcame obstacles, and, di- and didn't listen to negativity. She inspired me to take my dream and live it, despite what people m- might say. My health teacher always tells us to never, ever give up, and your book helped me to understand this phrase more. I also love that Creel sewed for a living. I like sewing, and this book inspired me to do it more often. I have not read that many books that talk of sewing, and these descriptions of sewing sounded like they came from a very experienced seamstress. Creel met many dragons through the course of this book, and they inspired me as well. Theoratus the dragon inspired me with his honesty and truth. He held his end of a bargain without fail. 
He reminds me of my friend Lauren, who always tells the truth. Fenuel the dragon evokes wonderful thoughts of my father. They are both warriors, but they are loyal to their friends and their family. My history teacher reminds me of the dragon Neva, sharp, witty, and severe. When Shardus the dragon took care of Creel, he showed me that dragons, although works of storytellers, were gentle animals. Shardus reminds me of my mother, how when I need her, she is there without fail. Finally, thinking about Amacrin the dragon brings to mind a picture of my sister with a book in her hand. They both love books dearly, as do I. I fell in love with Shardus's kind, caring, beautiful soul and his, and his elegant, regal demeanor. He is my favorite dragon. Your dragons were intricate, many-layered creatures of intelligence. To me, you portrayed dragons like the people we should look up to. Your dragons, although animals, reminded me of people in so many ways. Their human-like expressions, their mannerisms, and most importantly to me, the love they showed. Dragon slippers moved me to tears as I read of Creel's loyalty to her dragon friends when they were in need, and of Shardus's unending love for his mate. I have read my copy of Dragon, Slip dragon Slippers again and again, the cover wearing away by hours spent reading it. I look at everyone differently now, as if they are dragons, so you truly changed my view of the world. Thank you so much for writing Dragon, dragon Slippers. The details you put into each character have become ingrained in my mind, and I look for Creels, Shardises, and Fenules, and the others wherever I go. Sincerely, Cecilia Fada. Cassie Atkins is a ninth grade student from Ravenswood High School, and she read Wonder by R.J. Palacio. Dear R.J. Palico, these days appearance is everything to everyone. It's like if you do, don't have the right look or style, you're not important. Living in a small county, everyone knows who everyone is and their families and how they are. This is how they base their opinions on certain individuals. Augie is not a very well-known person in his community until he goes to school. While reading your book, Wonder, I think about how the meaning behind your book corresponds to how things are in my life. It's like you took a red sticker and put it on a paper that only has blue stickers. What I'm saying is that Augie was put in a school while having a facial deformity that separates him from everyone else. He couldn't control what people thought about him, and with his disease, no one wanted to talk to him and get to know him as a person. Instead, they knew him for the disease. Your book relates to me because my disease is my last name. It is something I cannot change. I come from a family who likes to do bad things. I am one out of five siblings. The first two to be put in school set how our last name made us look. My oldest brother has been in and out of boys' homes and doesn't care about anything or anyone. My second oldest brother is following right in his footsteps, and he even dropped out of school at the age of 17. Now there's me. I'm the middle child. This book helped me realize that it is okay to be different. I considered my last name as a plague, just like Augie is considered a plague. He showed everyone that just because he had a face deformity, that didn't mean that he couldn't do the same things the other kids did including being smart. When people hear my last name, they start thinking that I must be a troublemaker, that I don't try in school, and I am simply dumb. Just because I join sports and I am nice to everyone and make good grades, I showed people that my last name doesn't mean I am someone you don't want to be around. This book didn't inspire me to make myself a blue sticker. It just made me be more appreciative of being a red sticker that still managed to fit in. Just like Augie, he couldn't change his face, and I couldn't change my last name, but we showed people that it was it was okay that we didn't need to be perfect. We needed to be us. Maybe without me having my last name, I wouldn't have taken this book to heart. And maybe if Augie didn't have anything different about him, he would have been just another kid. Thank you so much for reading my letter. I hope this made you smile and realize that your book is so inspirational to many people, including me. Without reading this book, I may have not joined many things that I do today. Today, I am a varsity cheerleader a member of a very great competition choir, and I'm on the honor roll every year. All because we had a deformity or a bad last name, it made us better people. My motto is, nothing can stop you, and your book is the reason I live by that every day. This book will always mean a lot to me. I read this, I read this at the beginning of my sixth grade year, and I am now in ninth grade. Thank you for helping me understand that being different is okay. It's how you deal with it that matters most. Thank you, Cassie Atkins. Ava Reed is an eighth grader from John Adams Middle School in Charleston, and she won honorable mention for her letter on the power of a praying teen by Stormy O'Martian. Dear Mrs. O'Martian, 
I'm writing to you this evening to tell you why your book, The Power of a Praying Teen, has meant so much to me. At this moment, I am a 13-year-old girl from Charleston, West Virginia. I attend John Adams Middle School as an 8th grader. Your book has been a source of guidance since I left elementary school. The Power of a Praying Kid and The Power of a Praying Teen were gifts from my mother who thought they would help me as I started a new school and had to meet new people. Without these books, I would not be as successful in the classroom, as content at home, or as confident around others. Why? It's because you have taught me how to pray and trust God. Most people attend church services once or twice a week. However, I feel like I attend church at home by studying the Bible every night before bed. The book I always read is from your Power of a Praying series. These chapters and passages teach me how to turn my problems over to God, such as worrying over tests and assignments, problems with friends, and other expectations that cause me to feel pressured. In less than 100 days, I will be a high school freshman. I will have the same emotions that I felt in sixth grade when I feared the unknown. While I'm excited to start a new chapter, I realize that I'm going to need to protect my values and beliefs more than ever before. Your book has shown me how to shield myself from bad influences and how to set boundaries to avoid trouble. Most importantly, these next four years will require me to decide what sort of path I want to take in this lifetime. I will need to make serious choices about where I will attend college and what I should study once I get there. Your book tells me to ask God to show me my purpose in life and what I will be called to do. Every decision that I make will have a consequence, even if it's a good one. On page 123 of Praying Teen, you write that God has important things for me to do with my life, and he has given me gifts, talents, and abilities for that purpose. Opportunities to use my skills will open up, and doors will close if I am not supposed to go through them. I just have to be patient and believe that everything will work out. In conclusion, your books remind me not to look so far ahead in my life that I become overwhelmed. I'm reminded to take one day at a time and to let God handle everything that comes next. On the last page of Praying Teen, you recite 1 Peter 5, 7, Cast all your anxiety upon him, for he cares for you. I will continue to do that. Sincerely, Ava E. Reed. We'll talk more about letters about literature right after this. Welcome to Understood.org, a free online resource for parents of kids with learning and attention issues with personalized recommendations, tools, and daily access to experts to help your child thrive. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Since the very first Letters About Literature contest in 1994, thousands of West Virginia students have taken the time to read books and write about what those books have meant to them. As you heard from our student writers on this show, they can be very poignant and heartfelt. With me now to talk about the importance of this very special program, WBLC Library Development Director, Heather Campbell-Shock. Heather, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Stan. So tell me, how important of a program do you feel Letters About Literature is? Well, I feel that it is a very important program. Uh, it gives students the opportunity not only to read and continue reading, but it also gives them an opportunity to reflect and to let the author know how much that particular work meant to them. How does the program work, the, the nuts and bolts? The nuts and bolts of the program is that it starts in Washington, D.C. at the Center for the Book at the Library of Congress. They send out the call in September. And the 50 affiliates in each state gets the call and starts advertising the program to public libraries, to schools, and to homeschoolers around the state. And the students have until about December and January to read and write their letters and get it submitted to the National Center for the Book. Uh, from there in February, we at the affiliate libraries get the letters to distribute to our judges. And the judges in the state have about two months to take a look at the letters, rate them, and choose the state winners for the program. From there, the uh, state winners go on to the national library again for consideration for the national award ceremony. How does a student get involved? Basically, all a student needs to do to get involved is to read a book, write a letter to that author, and from there, uh, submit their letter. They can have their school submit the letter to the National Center for the Book, 
or they can submit it by themselves, fill out an entry form, which is available online, and it comes available in about September, early October. What role does the local library play? The local library provides, uh, one, materials for the children to read. Um, they can provide suggestions of books to read. And from there, the pu public libraries can also submit letters on behalf of the students also. You know, it's quite an honor to be selected. We had, I believe, the uh, uh, 700 or so students in the state took part. Uh, just over 100 of them were honored with the various categories. So it's quite an honor to be selected to get to that level. I think it is quite the honor to get there. Uh, it shows not only the level of reading that the students are doing, but also their level of how they really think about the work, how it affected them, and how they express that in the letters to the authors. I think the program, you know, looking at it from the outside, uh, it really emphasizes reading and understanding what you're reading. You didn't have to put down in words mm -hmm. uh, what the book meant to you. Oh, yes. It really does have that component of how much internal thought did you have about that letter and how did it change your impact in your daily life or how it affected your worldview. Where would you like to see this program in 10 years? Uh, as its coordinator, I would love to see it grow. Uh, it would be nice if we could move out of our current venue, uh, out of the Fagan Theater, into a larger venue like the Clay Center and have thousands of students awarded uh, and recognized for their reading and writing. Heather, thank you uh, for taking the time out to spend, spend some time with us today. Thank you for having me, Stan. The West Virginia Library Commission encourages lifelong learning, individual empowerment, civic engagement, and an enriched quality of life by enhancing library and information services for all West Virginians. For questions or comments regarding topics on this show, please do not hesitate to call us at 1-800-642-9021 or visit us online at www.librarycommission.wv.gov. To keep you updated on library happenings in the state and beyond, the West Virginia Library Commission uses the WVLC website, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube channel, and the Library Lookout newsletter. If you haven't liked us or followed us on social media yet, please do. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. This is a serious problem, but one we can solve. Visit feedingamerica.org to help. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. Letters About Literature is a wonderful program. It encourages reading and writing and helps students understand how literature is more than just an assignment. It can be a life-changing experience. I'd like to thank the students who read their letters and shared those life-changing experiences with us today. And thanks also to Library Development Director, Heather campbell Shock. I'm your host, Stan Howe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Libraries Today.